What's going on guys, Wayne here. You know, recently it really seems that the construction equipment industry has really hit an inflection point of sorts when it comes to machine electrification. Um, up until about a year ago, you'd see a concept machine introduced at a show every so often, that maybe the release of a hybrid machine to the market. And there was even, you know, kind of testing of kind of plugged in, constantly plugged in wired electric machines. But, you know, at Con Expo last year, things really picked up a bit. At that show, we saw a lot of electric machines hit the show floor, including some from Bobcat, Takeuchi, Hyundai, but we also saw one that was already ready for production. And as of today, it's actually being delivered to customers, and that was the Case 580 EV backhoe. But if we wanna talk about the OG when it comes to construction equipment electrification, at least in modern terms and things that have actually hit the market, then that title really falls at the feet of Volvo Construction Equipment, which introduced its very first battery electric machines all the way back in 20. At the Bama show in 2019 in Munich, Germany, Volvo took the wraps off of the ECR25 electric compact excavator and the L25 electric compact wheel loader. And those aren't concept machines. You can buy those machines right now. They are on the market today. But look, Volvo's got bigger electrification plans beyond the compact equipment segment. And back at that point that I kind of made at the top of the video about an inflection point, if 2020 was really where things started to pick up and specifically at Con Expo, 2021 really kind of puts us right at the threshold of kind of entering into an electrification era for construction equipment. Right at the top of the year, there was there's just been lots of electrification news from companies like Deere and of course Case with, with that 580 EV backhoe that I mentioned making some important deliveries. And then there was Komatsu, which announced, you know, it's working on a midsize electric excavator of its own. But most recently, Volvo introduced two new prototype electric excavators of its own. And that is the EC230 and the Wheeled EX03. All right, and we're gonna dig into what we know about these two electric prototype excavators, but you know, we're also gonna dig into what makes Volvo such a unique player in electric construction machinery and why they're probably already a good bit ahead of much of the competition. So let's get into it. Now, like I just said, Volvo has unveiled two electric prototype mid-size excavators. Technically, one of them is a concept and the other is a prototype. And we're gonna get into, you know, what the difference is there between concept and prototype because it is important in kind of understanding Volvo's uh, process here of bringing a machine to market. But we're gonna start with the concept machine and that is the EX03. Now, this is a 14-ton wheeled excavator, placing it firmly in that mid-size excavator segment. And Volvo says, this is actually the first electric concept machine that it has made in that midsize excavator range. Now, since this is a concept, there aren't any performance numbers or further kind of specs to delve into. And really the video we even have of the machine is 3D generated because at least at this point, it's possible that Volvo hasn't really even, you know, actually prototyped a real kind of working version of this machine for real world use, though that is in the plans. But that's why it's called a concept after all. Volvo is really putting this machine out into the world, this video, this footage of this machine. They're putting all of that out into the world to kind of generate conversation and to elicit feedback from customers, you know, not just on the fact that, you know, it is an electric machine and what your thoughts would be on having an electric machine at this size point that, you know, reduces emissions to zero and creates a very, very low amount of noise, things that would be very useful on a wheeled excavator of this size. But really, you know, the other kind of conversation starter they're hoping that this thing is, is because of that giant screen on the back. Now, this screen is heavily designed towards situations when this excavator is roading or when it's working in urban or other high traffic environments. And, you know, for a wheeled excavator, that is often a big chunk of the time. Now, with the release of this concept, Volvo has actually provided a few potential uses for having that screen on back. The first of which is that this screen would essentially allow anyone behind the excavator to see through it thanks to a real-time video feed of what's happening in front of the machine. Second, in the event that this machine is stationary, Volvo says that this screen would also be able to display safety or other text-based messages to other operators around the machine or to, you know, those who aren't on the work zone who just happen to be moving alongside the work zone. Basically, you know, integrating digital message boards into the machine itself. Now, that would also come in handy if the machine starts to back up. So basically, the signage would display that the machine is backing up with a, you know, a text-based message, giving everyone around the machine kind of one more way of knowing in addition to the standard backup alarm. Now, another 
potential use that Volvo has kind of outlined for this giant screen. It's it's kind of farther out there, but I kind of see where, where they're going with this. It's basically displaying a feed of the operator themselves on that giant screen. And, and here's what uh, Volvo says about this. Basically, it would allow the operator to make eye contact with pedestrians and workers from inside the cab in order to minimize misunderstandings and increase safety. Now that's the EX-03, but the other pre-production excavator that Volvo recently kind of previewed or gave a sneak peek of was the EC-230. Now we've got even less information on the EC-230 than we have on the EX-03, uh, other than the fact that it's a 23 ton excavator compared to the EX-03's 14 ton uh, size. And, and Volvo is saying on the EC-230 that it could cut your energy costs by 60 to 70%. So there's obviously a lot that we don't know about these two electric excavator programs prototypes, but there are a few kind of things that we do know about them, things that they kind of have in common that are important to point out. First, obviously, they are replacing diesel engines with battery packs. Duh, they're battery powered electric machines, that's obvious. But kind of the first kind of important detail to note is that Volvo said both of these machines, you know, even though they are replacing diesel with battery, they will have the same power and performance or better than the diesel machines that came before them. And second, both of these machines are going to retain their hydraulic systems. Now, that's an important detail to note in terms of the development of a mid-size electric excavator because as we pointed out in our video on Bobcat's electrification work, which, you know, if you haven't seen that already, go ahead and check that one out. But as we noted in that video, you know, in the future, you know, OEMs are basically gonna be able to decide whether or not to retain uh, hydraulics or to, you know, skip hydraulics altogether in favor of electric motors and electric actuators, kind of get rid of hydraulic oil, hydraulic pumps, and hydraulic lines altogether for a fully electric system. Volvo, in this instance on these two excavators is not doing that. In fact, I recently spoke with Volvo Construction Equipment Vice President Ray Gallant. And, you know, according to Ray, you know, while some fully electric machines may hit the market kind of eventually at some point in, in the future, within Volvo at least, that isn't the plan at any point in the near future. And, you know, one of the other things that Ray added is that you might never see a wholesale switch completely away from hydraulics at all. It just might not make sense. Now, the second big thing that we know about both of these machines is that their batteries are being developed in-house by Volvo itself. And that's key because not a single other construction equipment OEM that has introduced electric machines, concept or otherwise, can say that or at least has come out and said that. Now, the majority of those other construction equipment OEMs that have introduced electric concepts or prototypes the majority of those OEMs have really partnered with really one company and that's Green Machine. Now we go into much greater detail on Green Machine in that video that I mentioned earlier on Bobcat's electrification plans, but you know, Bobcat, Case, Takeuchi, all of them have partnered with Green Machine to effectively kind of retrofit existing equipment into battery powered concepts. And as we discussed in another previous video on Komatsu's electrification plans on their midsize excavator that they're currently developing, check that one out too if you haven't already, uh, Komatsu is partnering with a company called Proterra in the development of their machine and Hyundai has been partnering with Cummins on the development of its electric excavator prototypes. Now, what we do know about the batteries that are going into Volvo's electric excavator prototypes, apart from the fact that they are made within Volvo, is that these batteries were initially designed to go into Volvo's electric truck designs. And what's interesting about that is that, you know, while using a battery designed for a truck in an excavator is certainly a suitable kind of starting point in the development of an excavator, it's probably not going to fly once you're about to go to market. There are gonna to have to be changes made in the development process to that battery to really make it suitable for construction work, obviously. Now, there are a ton of different design considerations that differ between you know, batteries designed for excavators and batteries designed for trucks, but chief among them is weight. You know, While an excavator can use the weight and the heft of a large battery pack, the, the battery pack that you're gonna to need to power a mid-size excavator, while it can use all of that weight to its advantage, you know, Komatsu, for example, has said that it's gonna be forgoing a counterweight 
entirely in its electric midsize excavator, you know, using that extra weight that's coming from the battery pack that's currently not there, you know, with the diesel powertrain on a normal machine. Um, you know, trucks, on the other hand, need as light of a battery pack as possible so as to not, you know, cut into their payload ratings. So while you obviously can't use the exact same batteries across these industries and across these vehicle platforms, let alone to, you know, speak about, you know, Volvo's, uh, you know, consumer vehicle division that is putting these things into cars and SUVs. You can't use the exact same batteries across all of these things, but you, you can use an underlying platform. That's the beauty of battery design and really kind of coming to scale with battery manufacturing, battery development, and battery design. That's really going to be the challenge for, you know, just about any industry that is looking to electrification as its future. And that's why, you know, Volvo has announced recently a whole new business division around its electrification efforts called Volvo Energy. Now, this new division is not only going to make kind of that interplay that's required between trucks and consumer vehicles and construction equipment, you know, in the service of battery development, it's not only going to make all of that work more streamlined by coordinating that work, it's also going to be doing the work of kind of figuring out the, the supply chain side of it, because that's going to be a real challenge. That's a real challenge for anybody getting started, even the Teslas of the world or the GMs of the world. That is kind of that supply chain challenge is huge right now. And they're going to have to secure the necessary partnerships that they'll need on that side of, of, of development and manufacturing. And, you know, you know, all of the other legwork that's going to be specific to kind of developing battery technology and bringing that technology to scale, you know, they're going to be doing all that inside the Volvo Energy kind of division, allowing all of the other divisions like construction equipment and cars and Volvo trucks to kind of do the, the work and focus on, on how to tailor the resulting battery technology to their specific needs. And I can't really overstate how everything I just said there is such a huge advantage for Volvo construction equipment, you know, let, let alone the rest of the company. But, you know, we're focused on the construction equipment division here in this video, obviously. It is such a huge advantage for them. Um, you know, if we are indeed moving into what increasingly looks like an electric kind of age for construction equipment, if we're moving across that threshold, that is going to be a big first step, you know, ahead of maybe the rest of the competition for Volvo. All right, so now that the similarities between these two electric excavator prototypes are, are kind of covered and we, we've talked about kind of Volvo's inherent advantage that they have and and really kind of developing you know electric uh, equipment in general. Let's move on to how these two machines are different because, you know, this difference really does kind of illustrate how important public input is to Volvo's development strategy with regard to electric equipment. Now, earlier I mentioned my talk with Volvo Construction Equipment VP Ray Gallant, and, and as Ray kind of explained to me, you know, th these two machines really do kind of represent two very different stages in the company's development process. Now, as Volvo noted with the EX03, there are not plans to bring that specific machine to market. So when they call it a concept, they really do mean it. It's a concept. Could we possibly see an electric wheeled excavator with a giant screen available, you know, someday? Maybe. But, you know, right now, it's far from a sure thing. The EC230, on the other hand, is a prototype, not a concept. This machine is currently undergoing customer testing in South Korea, or it's preparing for that customer testing in South Korea. That's a lot of the reason why it looks the way it does, like a normal kind of excavator apart from what's inside. Now, in our conversation, Ray told me that as a prototype, it's past the concept stage and it's now well on its way to being released commercially that is in South Korea, at least. And that's important to know because as Ray reminded me kind of about the development process for the ECR25 electric excavator and the L25 electric wheel loader, you know, those were both kind of, you know, concepted and tested in Europe. They were released first in Europe and then they were, you know, only later were they released to customers in North America. Now, of course, this implies, you know, greater demand of and greater acceptance for electric machines both in Europe and in Asian countries. But, you know, as Ray, you know, noted, another consideration for Volvo is going to be infrastructure, charging infrastructure. It, it just doesn't make much sense from a business standpoint to develop a machine and release that machine into a market with little to no way of charging it. And based on kind of looking around you here in North America and, and based on those comments from Ray, that infrastructure is further along elsewhere in the world because of that greater enthusiasm for electric equipment um, than it is here in North America 
to the surprise of you know absolutely no one. Now, another more obvious signifier of the differences between these two machines is their color scheme. The EX03 is like a light green color and the EC230 is that traditional Volvo yellow. In fact, all of Volvo's kind of concept construction equipment, most of them being electric or autonomous of some kind, all of their kind of concept lab machines going all the way back to 2016 have had this, this green color scheme. Now I say 2016 there because it was at a 2016 event hosted in Sweden where Volvo first unveiled its LX1 hybrid wheel loader concept and the HX1 electric and autonomous hauler concept. And then working with partner and construction giant Skanska, Volvo set to work building an electrified quarry operation with the LX1, a newer model of that electric autonomous hauler called the HX02, and the EX01, a 70 ton excavator that featured dual power through a diesel engine and a cable that provided electricity to the machine, allowing it to sometimes work on diesel when needed and when it's stationary, work off that electricity. Now in 2018, Volvo announced that testing at this electrified quarry site reduced emissions by 95%. They reduced energy costs by 70% on that site and they reduced operator costs by 40%. Now Volvo's continuing these electrified quarry tests today in full view of the public. So with all of that being said, we have a clearer view of kind of Volvo's development process when it comes to electric construction equipment, you know, and a kind of a roadmap for the company as they kind of move into the future with, you know, from concept to prototype to customer testing, and then eventually to market, you know, with kind of the details there on how they're developing batteries, you know, this, this new Volvo Energy Group and how that's going to assist them in, you know, scaling their battery technology for all of these different products across the, you know, conglomerate, you know, into the future. And one machine in particular that I do want to note here at the very end, the TA15 that was recently announced has kind of followed this very path. Now that TA15 is part of Volvo's Terra Autonomous Transport Project, and it grew out of that HX01 and the HX02 concepts that we were just talking about. Now the TA15 is a full-fledged prototype in testing with Harsco Environmental, which is running four of these TA15s to transport slag autonomously into a landfill. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap up our in-depth look here at Volvo's electrification efforts in the construction equipment industry and really kind of how it has a leg up on the rest of the competition, kind of moving into this new electric age for construction equipment. But we wanna hear your thoughts. Let us know what you think of these efforts in the comments below and let us know what you think of construction equipment being electrified in general in the comments below and what you're hoping to get out of electric machines. Also, if you like this video and found the information and useful in any kind of way, do us a favor and hit that like button below. It really helps our channel out. And if you want more coverage of construction equipment, head on over to our website at equipmentworld.com. And while you're there, subscribe to our daily newsletter. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button below and hit the bell. Turn on notifications so you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. Thank you guys so much again for watching. We always appreciate your time and we'll see you in the next one.